All right, so for our first day of class, social media for your business, the network we're going to focus on today is Twitter. We have many networks to talk about, many networks to choose from, and you may decide to focus on one or two or all of them. And I'm going to talk about tools to help us manage many of them at once, because it will be a lot of work to manage Twitter and Facebook and LinkedIn and in Pinterest and all of that manually, but I'll show you tools later for you, for you to use one control panel to manage many of them. Not all of them, no one has made that yet, but I'll show you later how to manage multiple. Go ahead and open up your web browser. We've got all the popular ones down here. So open up any of your favorite web browsers. Let's take a quick look at a Twitter account. Twitter, let's go to the address twitter.com slash pmdinteractive. That's my company. How many of you currently have a Twitter account? Okay, how many of you currently have a Twitter account for your business? Okay, so Twitter doesn't differentiate. <clears throat> Other networks do. But some networks differentiate between a business account and a personal account on their network. And we'll talk about them when we get to that. I'll be making notes in a notepad file here, and I'll give you these notes at the end of the day in the network folder. You can take notes, of course, and I'll be taking my own notes. But I'm going to say here, many networks have a personal profile and a business page. Now notice I did say a specific noun here, profile and page. Not all of the networks are consistent, but overall, usually, if you've got a profile, usually it's for a personal entity, a person, for me as Victor. And usually, when something is labeled as a page, it's for a business, for PMD Interactive, my company. Twitter, at the moment, does not differentiate. So, Twitter does not give for MG8. Um, Google Plus, when we get to that, does. Facebook does. Pinterest does. YouTube kind of does. When we get to that, uh, YouTube's a little special. So we'll get to that eventually. Kind of does differentiate. Twitter doesn't. We're going to create an account, and it can be for business or personal. And I bring this up because many times people, when they start off with this stuff and create your Facebook page, oftentimes people create it wrong. They create a Facebook page as a person, even though you're trying to do it for a business. So one quick way to check if you created the wrong kind of Facebook account is, does your Facebook business page have likes or does it have friends? If your Facebook business page has friends, you did it wrong. It's set up as a person. You need to have likes on Facebook. And of course, we can talk about later how to change it if you did it wrong. Same thing with Pinterest. By default, with Pinterest, when you create an account, it'll want you to make it as a person. But if you're going to do it as a business, if you're going to use Pinterest as a business, you should create it as a business. Technically, within the the terms of service that everyone agrees to but no one reads, it says in there somewhere, you agree to use X network properly as a business if you're a business, not a person if you're a business. So we'll deal with that later because Twitter does not differentiate. It doesn't matter to Twitter at the moment. They may change it later. And so if you took a quick look at my Twitter account here, this is a typical sort of account or profile on Twitter. We will see that we have an uh, area for branding. We can put some graphic, a logo, biographical information. Many of the things that we'll talk about in one network apply to every other network with variation. So one thing I'll say here, for all your networks, Make sure to fill in as much as possible 
the bio, the biography. Well, let me put it as the branding. That includes the biography, the little spot there that it asks you to write a little bit about the, the, the company. You want to fill that in. I'll explain these things why in a moment. But you want to fill in the biography. You want to put in your company logo. If it gives you the space to put in a cool picture at the top, use it. All of these networks have some amount of branding that you can do to them. Fill that in as much as possible. Because, for the purpose of, because you do this to attract more followers. Every time you create any of these accounts, you have the basic generic account. When you create a brand new Twitter account, your logo is a little egg. You haven't hatched yet. The biography is empty. The location is empty. All of that branding information is empty. Same thing on YouTube, Pinterest, Facebook, Instagram, Snapchat, LinkedIn. All of these networks are very basic when you first create them. You want to fill them in as much as possible. And I'll give you tips when we get there. You want to fill them in as much as possible to attract more followers. Um, because no one is going to want to follow an account that looks incomplete, an account that looks right out of the box, which is often what a spam account is like. A spam account still has the generic egg. The spam account still has the generic icon on YouTube. These spam accounts that are created just to, you know, sell uh, cheap, authentic Rolex watches. These are created, these are like fly-by-night organizations that can create an account and try to rip you off. So to entice followers, you want a complete account, a complete profile, a legitimate looking one to entice people to follow you. You want followers because they are your target audience. Social media, also known as social networks, also known as online marketing, is a way to reach an audience. For a person, most likely it's between me and my friends to share funny cat pictures, to keep up with the celebrities, to see what's happening in the news, personal stuff. But for a business, social media is the purpose of it is to market or to reach an audience, a target audience, a captive audience. In my opinion, there are two aspects of social media. Both are legitimate. There is the personal, fun, frivolous aspect Frivolous. I don't have spell check on this. Frivolous. Frivol house. Frivolous. Personal, fun, frivolous aspect of social media. Again, both of these are legitimate. You probably use Facebook, you love Facebook. You use Twitter, you love Twitter. You use Google Plus, you love Google Plus. You use it for personal. Totally legitimate use of social media. Although sometimes people give all of social media a bad rap in that, oh, that's the place where people share their breakfast and they talk about what movie they saw last night. Boring, dumb stuff. Sure, but it's still valuable for people. The other side of the coin of social media, in my opinion, then, is the, is the professional one. Professional, serious, business aspect of social media. So, you know, these would be examples of, you know, John Smith on social media. Whereas this would be example of John Deere on social media. A business, a company, some sort of brand that is on social media to reach an audience, to sell a product, to gain followers, to do tech support, etc. So those are the two big sides that I would say of social media. They're both valuable. They're both legitimate. We, of course, in this class are going to focus on the professional aspect of it. Not that you have to run it seriously, because maybe you're a daycare and you want to get on social media to get more 
more more kids in your daycare. That's perfectly fine. You don't you don't have to run it as a serious endeavor. What I'm saying here is there's the personal and there's the business side of things. That's why you want to get followers. Think about it in terms. Let's think of the ancient ancient uh, ancient social media. Uh, in this room, we can sort of see the example of ancient Pinterest. Does anyone see it? If we look around the room, the bulletin board, that pin board right there is ancient Pinterest. Because Pinterest, when we get to it, is the place where we share pictures um, and content. We pin it on our Pinterest account. And it came from the concept of the pin board, which has been around forever. That is old school social media there. Something gets posted up there, people see it. Someone is sharing right there. Someone sees it. And it could cause someone to go enroll in that class, or to find out about our career track, or learn about no food or drinks allowed in the room. We're sharing something on our old school social media there. The new generation, of course, is all online. It's digital. It's on your computer, your laptop, your, your cell phone. That's modern social media. And those of you that are in here, the 20 or so that, you, that are here, would see this message, perhaps, Let's say some of you actually paid attention to look there. Let's say 10 of you out of the whole class actually saw what was there. And then a few of you actually want to go look at it and say, I do want to take the graphic design class. And you go take the class. Let's say two of you actually followed through and took a class that you saw on that board. That's the return on investment of broadcasting this to the whole room. 20 people, I got two people to sign up. In social media, the online world, same thing. I want to send my tweet out to 20 people, 50 people, 100 people, 1,000 people, 10,000 people. I want to send my message to as many people as possible, as many followers as possible, because some of them are going to follow through. Live by the 1% rule of social media. 1% of your followers are the most active. They are more apt to follow through. Follow through as in buy your product, donate to your nonprofit, non read your blog post, uh, download your ebook. Whatever you're trying to do, sell that house, because I'm a realtor and I want to use social media to sell houses. 1% of your followers is a good goal to have for results. You may be amazing on social media, your product may be amazing, your brand may be amazing. And for you, you're seeing that 20% of your followers are the ones that are really following through. 50%. Well, if I've got 10 followers, what's 50% of 10 followers? Five people. Five people actually followed through out of your 10 followers. But I thought they were my friends. That's why they're following me. Well, five of them are your real friends. Uh, what if you take it as 1%? What's 1% of 10? Rounding up. One. One person followed through out of your 10 followers. Again, depending on your business, your brand, your company, your product, and many factors, that may be much higher, or even lower. But if you think about, that's why I want to get followers. That's why I want to get likes on Facebook. That's why I want to get followers on Twitter. That's why I want to get subscribers on YouTube. That's why I want to get followers on Pinterest, or all of these networks, Snapchat, LinkedIn, blah, 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 all of these networks. I want to get more followers, because 1% of them are the ones that are really going to buy my product, buy my book subscribe to my newsletter, see my paintings, read my articles, whatever you're trying to do online. Any questions so far? Let's take an example here, my company. We have 191 followers. Yeah, it's not huge like some of these that have 10,000 and 1 million and all of that. But if we if you take the example here, what we're doing on, on our social media here, we support your success through individualized web solutions such as web design development and social media marketing. 
So we're trying to get more customers for our business via social media, specifically Twitter. Potentially, there are 191 people that could hire us. Yes, there are going to be fake accounts, spam accounts, and a lot of people that are not really going to want to hire us. But out of the 1%, you know, let's round it up to 200. What's 1% of 200? Two. We could uh, make some good money on two new clients, doing websites for them, social media for them, photography, whatever. You don't know. It may be higher than that, and we get hired for more things. But we're sharing here photos and pictures, funny things, polls, advice, all of that stuff. And the purpose of that is to reach people about a specific topic and hopefully get hired. So more followers could be more results. In the lingo of, of marketing, we have the concept of impressions and conversions. Impressions are how many views did you get? Why do they call it views? They need to make up lingo on every industry, don't they? Impressions. Conversions. How many actions did you get? Results. Conversions. Now, they've got these fancy terms because in Twitter, an impression is simply that someone saw your tweet. In Twitter, all these networks will give you all of these stats, uh, also known as analytics. All of these networks will give you analytics data. And it'll tell you, that tweet had 100 impressions. Well, I've only got two followers, but I got 100 impressions, which, which means it was those people that saw it and other people throughout the Twitter network. A lot of people saw it. They were, I suppose, impressed by the tweet. They saw the tweet. And that has some value. It shows that your message is getting out there. But what has more value are the conversions. How many of those that saw your tweet actually clicked your link to buy, or your link to watch the video, or um, replied to you, or retweeted you? <coughs> How many people actually did something about your tweet, or your Facebook post, or your YouTube video, or your Snapchat, or post, or your LinkedIn update, whatever? These concepts apply through all the networks. So that's why conversions are more valuable. These are actual results. You converted someone from something that they weren't into something that they became. You converted someone from a non-buyer into a buyer. It was a conversion. So you can also think of them as goals, goals achieved. And together, that forms the CTR, click-through rate, which is a simple formula of um, conversions divided by impressions. <clears throat> Click-through rate is conversions divided by impressions. How many actual results did you get? Divide that by how many times people saw something. That will give you some percentage. And that's one indicator, one metric, one, uh, one way for you to see how effective you're being. So let's see, my impressions were 768. My tweet was seen by 768 people. And 22 clicked the tweet to accomplish something. So if we do a little calculation here, 22 divided by 768 is 2.8. 6%. He had a 2.86% CTR. 2.86% success rate, you could say. Your efforts gave you 2.86%. Now that is not tied, just by this example, that is not tied into anything like sales, 
um, or downloads of your product. That's a deeper discussion for later. Uh, because Twitter can show you this data, but it can only show you so much of the data in that people clicked my link to go buy my book, but Twitter's still not going to tell you if they really bought your book. You have to get that data out of somewhere else, probably your website, your, your website's uh, shopping cart feature. These networks usually can tell you a lot of great data from within their network, not as far as what happened on your website or on Amazon and such to various degrees. And so there's a lot of theoretical stuff to think about with social media, but to really condense it down, you want to use social media as a marketing tool, as an advertising tool a place to get followers, a place to get a target audience, a captive audience, to market to them. Because in theory, these followers are the ones that are going to follow through and convert them into something. So the more of them that you have, the higher that result will be. The how to get followers, that's what we'll be talking a lot about in these various days. And whatever we learn for Twitter, we can apply to YouTube. Whatever we learn for Pinterest, we can apply to Facebook to various degrees with variations. That's why you want to get followers. That's why you want to use social media. It's a marketing tool. Let's click on um, the home icon at the top left corner and we will um, we will either log in or sign up for an account. Again, if you've already got an account, is it personal or is it business? For Twitter, it doesn't matter. But if you created a Twitter account with your company name, we can use it. Or if you'd like to create a brand new, um, a brand new profile, you can do so. You can delete it later. I'm going to go through the process of creating an account quickly. Um, I recommend that you do also because what we'll be learning here, you can delete it later, and it's a good idea to 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 get this information and then apply it. Uh, later, rather than kind of muddling through it as you learn it on your real account. So I will go to the top right corner and click Sign Up. And the first thing Twitter will ask is a full name. And again, this is misleading because Twitter doesn't differentiate between business and, and personal. So this would be the full name of your business, not the full name as you, the person, the owner of the business. So let's say I'm setting this up as my fictional business, Victor's Bakery. So I can write here uh, the name of the business as it's supposed to be spelled. And um, there is a limit at a certain point. Because if I'm, if I'm the original Victor's Bakery, I'm going to run out of space. You have a limited amount of space to write here. Uh, we've gotten a couple clients that they have a long name. It doesn't quite fit. So you have to be judicious in how you write this because you do have a limit. Whatever you write here, however, doesn't have much bearing in um, the success of your of your Twitter efforts. You just need to have some kind of name because we'll engage in the tactics to get followers and such. Is yes. that going to be what your hashtag is, what you write here? No, that's just registering. This doesn't have to do with the hashtag yet, but no, this this has this doesn't have anything to do with that, your username or anything just yet. Um, so this can be anything and it can be changed as many times as we want. The thing also with this is that this is not unique because I can uh, create a brand new account and call it Microsoft and it will let me. I can create a brand new account and call it Samsung and it will let me. This full name here is not unique. That's why sometimes there's more than one Justin Bieber on Twitter, more than one uh, you know, famous person, because anyone can create any name here on the full name. 
On the next screen, we're going to see what is known as the username, and that one is unique. The username, there can only be one of those on Twitter in the whole world. But the full name can be anything you want. And people can get very creative here in that they can write exclamation points and, you know, symbols, they can put emoji right here, special characters, if you know the special characters, like for, you know, accent marks and all of that, people can, can do that. I wouldn't quite get so complex there. Just the name of your company. Because anyone can create a Twitter account, and there are over about 320 million accounts in the world, um, nowadays Twitter wants to try to stop the spammers, so it'll ask you for an email or a phone number to verify that you're a real person and not a spammer. I can get by here by making up a fake email at gmail.com for the moment. I can make one up here that already exists. Someone beat me to it. Okay, a real fake email already registered. Okay, a real fake email 999. Perfect. So this, you can make this up. It doesn't have to be a real email address. It's going to nag you to verify it, but we can ignore it. And again, if you're doing this like me for a fake company or just to learn it, it doesn't matter, we can delete it later. It, it won't. It won't make a difference. It's just uh, it, it will have your phone number, but when you delete the account, it'll go away. And then pick a password. This is a password for you to log into Twitter. You can write whatever you want there. I do notice that Twitter doesn't give a spot here to confirm it. That's unfortunate because sometimes you type your password wrong here and then you proceed and you have a wrong password. It should give you to confirm your password. And then we get a check mark, Taylor Twitter based on recent website visits. This that we're writing here, we can change it whenever we want. So if you've already got an account, I'll show you where to change it later. And this also about Taylor Twitter based on website visits, we can change later. What this is about is that uh, Twitter is going to want to show you content that you may care about. But it won't know what you care about unless, for example, it puts tracking cookies on your web browser, which sounds scary, but tracking cookies have been around as long as the web, 27 years, which is that a little code goes on your, webs on your computer, and when you visit one website, it gets saved. You visit another website, that gets saved. So your, your trail on the internet kind of gets saved. And then what Twitter uses it for is to see, oh, this person spent a lot of time on technology websites. Let's show them technology content. This person spent a lot of time on investing websites. Let's show them more investing stuff on Twitter. You may, say, you may say, that sounds horrible. I don't want Twitter to know about me. So you can turn it off. The value of leaving it on is because it will help you find accounts that would matter to what your business is about. So it's not only Twitter, of course, that uses cookies. Everything uses cookies nowadays. So if you're not comfortable with using cookies on Twitter, you can turn that off right there. Okay. Now we're going to see that. And it's up to you to use it or not. I'm going to leave it on. I can turn it off later. And the point of that, again, is for me to find accounts, people on Twitter, that might be valuable to me. Click Sign Up. I did it via email, it's asking for a phone number, but notice there's a really small skip right there. So if you don't want to put a phone number, you can skip it. First screen was to, first screen was to choose a uh, full name, and this screen now is to use a, choose a username. This is the one that's unique and only one account in the world can have. And we can change it as many times as we want. But this is the part where it might be a little difficult to choose the right username because I'm Victor's Bakery and therefore I want Victor's Bakery. The challenge with the usernames on Twitter and many networks is that you cannot use spaces, you cannot use special characters, 
except usually the underscore. So it has to be a very plain name. And it has to fit within the limits, usually 15 characters. So I'm trying to choose Victor's Bakery, and it says it's already been taken. Twitter just celebrated 10 years last month. Twitter's been around a decade. Facebook's been around since 2014. So these networks have been around a while. Uh, I believe this is also the year that uh, YouTube celebrates 10 years. So these networks have been around a while, which means that some of these names have been taken, especially if you want to be Bob on Twitter. That was taken. It's taken on every network. You're too late. Well, I want my company name, Victor's Bakery. Again, Twitter is global. Anyone can create an account. That might have been an account created in Chicago, New York, Manila. It's, it's taken. So you have to settle for something else. It might give you suggestions which are usually not that great. We'll just put a number on it. So what if I become Victor's... Remember, I cannot use apostrophes. What if I put Victor's underscore bakery? Taken. The point of this is the, the name that, I, that my family business has had for 20 years is taken on Twitter. And so the problem is you'll have to settle for a different name. But I will make a note here on my notes. Claim your name as soon as possible. on all the networks that you plan on using. Claim your name on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, YouTube, Pinterest, Google+, Plus. what we'll be talking about in this class, and other things. If a brand new network comes out, claim your name. The reason for that is you may never use it. You may have never heard of it. How many of you have heard of the newest social network that just came out this year, January? Peach. Have you guys heard of a new social network called Peach? on my Twitter page. So Peach is one of the newest social networks. It may take off, it may sputter, who knows? But maybe it does take off and you want to get in on it and someone else took Victor's Bakery. So at the least, claim your name. You can then have it reserved for yourself and use it at some point. Because unfortunately, to my knowledge, none of these networks make it very easy to get your name if someone else took it. Unless you're a celebrity. Unless you're Jim Carrey, and you're trying to get Jim Carrey away from Jim Carrey, the dentist in Omaha, you're not going to get Jim Carrey. And us little people, which are not as big as these big names, are not going to be able to claim these names if someone took them, especially if they're using them legitimately. If someone took a name and hasn't used it for six months, 12 months, three years, Twitter still, most of these networks still don't release them for you to use them legitimately which is a big shame. They really need to do that. There are accounts here that haven't been touched in years, and they're just they're hanging around. And people that want those names can't get them because they're not celebrities. They're not big, unfortunately. Twitter and most of the networks don't release those names. Yes? No, click the skip button on the bottom left corner. It's a really small button. You can skip it, and then you'll see this screen. And so you want to claim your name when you can. Or else you'll have to settle for something like the underscore big. The doesn't even fit. I'm out of space. So I'm going to say Victor's Bakery 1. So at this point, I will click to select next. Question? So Twitter uh, then is going to have a little sort of spiel, like a little welcome spiel to say what Twitter's about. Celebrities are on it, organizations, companies, businesses, nonprofits, schools, everyone's on Twitter. 
every big business, small business, everyone's on Twitter uh, for various reasons. Most of the time to market to people, to find an audience, to sell them something, to make them aware of something, to just uh, share stories or pictures and make friends. It's all legitimate why you would want to use any social network like Twitter. And so what happens when you create a, an account the first time, it's going to ask you, well, what are you interested in? And the point of this is for you to find relevant accounts. So I'm going to make a note here and then we will do this later. Your business account should follow other businesses and customers. And these could be existing customers, potential customers. But your business should also follow other businesses. People sometimes don't think about that. Um, briefly, and we'll do it later, uh, why should your business follow other businesses? Uh, to see the competition. What are they doing? What are they doing right? What do I like that they're doing? What, do I, what, what are they doing wrong? So to see the competition, to get inspiration, to keep up with trends. So you want to follow other accounts that are also businesses. It's up to you to decide how close of a business to follow. Meaning, I'm Victor's Bakery. Am I going to follow the other bakery that's down the street and also on Twitter? Well, probably not myself because they're right down the street. They're my direct competition. I don't want to follow them because they will know on Twitter that I followed them. There will be notifications. So, okay, maybe I don't want to follow the competition that's right down the road, but maybe I want to follow someone that's on the other side of town, or maybe one town over. Or maybe I want to follow the competition that's ancillary to mine. I'm Victor's Bakery, but I'm going to follow other food-related Twitter businesses, other restaurants on Twitter. Maybe they're on the same block, but they're an Italian food restaurant, and I'm a bakery. So I'll follow them to get inspiration, to keep up with trends, to see what they're doing. So you should still think about your business account following other businesses. And that's what it's telling us here. You're about to create a Twitter account. If you don't choose to follow anyone or anything, your Twitter will feel like a ghost town. Nothing's going on. You're not keeping up to date with anything. So it's suggesting some accounts to follow. Um, I wouldn't suggest the popular accounts because it's going to say, why not follow Justin Bieber? And why not follow Kim Kardashian? And why not follow blah 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 celebrities that I don't care about for this account? So I personally don't recommend that one. I would choose one of these categories. I'm this bakery, I'm a business. I don't exactly see one that says bakery or restaurant or business. I suppose possibly alts and culture, lifestyle maybe. You can select more than one of these and then on the next screen it'll say, okay, you've chosen this topic, why not follow these accounts? Which you can say yes or no. And I'll say, what's under lifestyle? Follow Emerald, Amanda Freetag, Guy Fieri, 10 News, Union Tribune, and it's going to say follow all of these. You can say, no, not this one, yes, this one, not that one. You can say none of them. But the point of this, I want to keep up with what's the latest recipe here, or, or what's going on in the local, because it's recommending 10 news here, what's going on here in local San Diego. Maybe some food event is coming up that my Twitter account about food should know about. All of these seem okay, but if I didn't want any of them, I can easily turn them off. <clears throat> so I've got a few. I'll say sure. I can always unfollow later. We'll see how to do that. So I'll click follow. It'll ask for uh, some sort of profile picture you want a logo here, the logo of your company. 
And so some advice here for all the networks. Most networks ask for a um, proportional logo. Proportional logo. It's either going to be a square or a circle. You know, proportional shape. Uh, most of these networks don't ask you for a rectangular logo. There's going to be some sort of square or round logo. So if your logo is a rectangular kind of logo and you upload it here, it'll either crop it or it'll shrink it and it won't look very professional. So if you've got a logo, you need to have whoever designed it or yourself make sure that you've got a square version of it. Twitter asks for a square version. We'll see, um, we'll see that Google Plus has a round one. We'll see that Pinterest, I think they have a round one too, but they've got a proportional one. They've got a square or a circle, not rectangles. I hardly see that, especially on the big ones. So if I had my logo here, I would upload it. Question? Yeah, just I just got locked out. Me too. Oh, right. good. Most also that says your account has been locked because it appears you are yeah, exhibiting automated behavior that violates Twitter rules. Yeah, most likely that happens unfortunately because if we think about it, there's about 20 of us right now, perhaps, creating a Twitter account. And Twitter sees, why are 20 people in one room creating Twitter accounts? Spam. So it locked you out. Uh, we're going to take a break soon, and then I believe after a short amount of time, it lets you back in. So we'll, we'll take a break soon. That always happens when we do this class, that suddenly some people can log in, some people can't if we create an account. So we'll just, we'll just wait a bit. So you want to add your company logo at some point as soon as possible. I don't have one here. I have to skip it for the moment. But you want to add that as soon as possible to be more of a legitimate company. Again, think in terms of a small square because your icon could be that small at some point. And so if you've got writing in your logo, it's going to scrunch down and it's not going to be readable. So my account has been locked. Just because we're all trying to do this at the same time. So if I were to, I suppose, give a phone number, it might it might let me proceed. You can decide to do that or not. Um, yeah, I know. That's what I'm saying. That a moment ago, mine said that my account has been locked because it's suspicious. So because we're all creating an account at the same time, it's getting suspicious. So here you can either put in a, a phone number or wait a little while, and it might let you through. We're going to take a break in a moment. But this is the process, basically, of creating an account. Uh, there's some nuances here and there. We're going to take a break. Uh, we're going to see about being able to log in. And then once we get in, we're going to talk about getting followers, how to interact on Twitter, and all of that stuff. Any general questions before the break? It's 7.16. Let's take a break until 7.17. When we come back, we will proceed.